You know, the thing I didn't ask you, you know, was to frame this whole conversation. No. What was the goal when you set out to make changes? Because you, you started this conversation by saying that the thing was the top seller or that you sold the most in its last year. Yeah. So how do you sit down and say, all of a sudden, we need to change this? What are you going to change? What were the goals? Well, the, the things that, that always made this car stand out dynamically, are the steering and handling are just head and shoulders above anything else in this class. Uh, and so our main thing was don't screw that up. Uh, but we really wanted to make the, the MVH, the interior noise, we wanted to bring that way down. Uh, and then we wanted to improve the ride quality some. We don't want it to be super cushy, but we want it to be, uh, have a sort of a milder touch when you hit a bump. We still want the body to be really well controlled. That gives okay. you a lot of confidence. Um, but we really want, worked on sort of rounding out the impact chunk, right? Um, and, and those are NVH and ride and, and handling are conflicting areas. So trying to, trying to, uh, Proof two of those involve not sacrificing the steering and handling was the big challenge. So one thing we did took some friction out. Another thing we did is, is uh, GVC that gives you the sharper, more direct steering response that lets us soften the suspension a little bit and still keep the steering response that we had before, right? Um, and then the uh, uh, we must have done something else. Well, 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 I had a whole presentation. Weren't you paying attention? I got it all written down in my notebook. <laughs> I really was paying attention. Um, I'm one of the few people that pays oh, attention the other, the in other, your presentation. The other thing we did is the, the steering rack, uh, it, we rigid mounted it to the subframe now. So we used to have rubber bushings on the steering rack, which is pretty common. Yeah. Uh, and now it's hard mounted to the subframe. The subframe's hard mounted to the car. So that created no a liability slop. problem over the years? No, no, not at all. I mean, you still got tires up yeah. there, so that, that isolates you. Yeah. The main reason those bushings were there um, is to prevent the uh, uh, vibration in the steering. If you got a tire that's a little bit out of balance or something like that. Yeah. So we changed the rear bushing on the front control arm um, to a liquid-filled bushing. It's like a little shock absorber inside the bushing. Yeah. And that damps out that vibration from, from an out-of-balance wheel and prevents it from getting into the steering. So we're not the first the, the balancing the, the friction and the struts or hard mounting the rack. We're, we're certainly not the first ones to ever do that. Mm -hmm. You look on a, a, the, an old BMW, they had hard mounted racks and ball joints everywhere. Like yeah. a 540. Uh, you, I think it's got right. a lot of rubber. I haven't looked at no. E39 540. My, my, my E39 540 has a steering box. Oh my god, really? Yeah. It's that old. <laughs> the 540s were, were the, the E39 was weird. Inline sixes had a steering rack. Yeah. V8s had a steering box. The M5 had a steering box. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, weird. Wow. Weird. So it's, it's got the slowest steering in the world, but the chassis behaves it's well once, so you, cool. once you get it chucked in. It oh. behaves well. I told you this last night, but for the voids down for the, uh, the audience, that was the first fast sedan I've ever driven. Yeah, the E39? The E39. Yeah, that was, a good, that was a good platform. Speaking of fast, yeah. you know what's coming now. What? You want so, more turbos? I, yeah, I put out an episode of Ask Moto Man answering a question. Yeah. When is Mazda going to put the 2.5 turbo in this car? The right. car we're in right here. And I took the position that they're not. Right. However, I got the horse's mouth here, so let's well, go. No, I, uh, we might. It fits. But consider this. You want a turbo. This fall, we're going to put two turbos in it. With a diesel. Yeah, let's see how that works. Okay. Right? And if it's up to me, we'll put the 2.5 turbo in there, too. Okay. But I'll tell you a little secret. Tell me a secret. It's not up to me. <laughs> <laughs> if it were up to you, they'd all be brown with manual transmissions. Right. Yeah, and yes. a 2.5 turbo. And absolutely. All, all yeah, absolutely. Oh, screw yeah. it. You would just put a big diesel in there. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. We'd be just driving a Mazda 6 turbo wagon right now. So, okay. So, for the avoidance of that, let's be very clear here. Yeah. It... This was designed to accept a 2.5 turbo from the CX-9. Let's... You can drop let, it in there. Let's... It was not designed to put it in there. All of our platforms were designed to accept all of our engines. Oh, this goes back to our... This uh, our is, Mazda this 3 is the episode. Active, so this is our large Sky Active platform from Mazda 3, Mazda 6, CX-5, CX-9 are all on the same platform. Mm -hmm. Our 2 liter, 2.5, naturally aspirated, 2.5 turbo, 2.2 uh, twin turbo diesel all fit in the same space. That giant four into two into one exhaust manifold on the naturally aspirated engines is bundled into a shape that takes the same space as two turbos on a diesel or one turbo on a gas engine. So everything's packaged the same. 
So, so it wasn't we can specifically do it. designed from the get go, no. but it can be the done. Plot, the, the architecture was laid out to give us that flexibility. If you want to. Right. And again, for the avoidance of doubt, there will definitively be the diesel coming in the fall. Yes. And that's the two turbo car. Yeah, it is two turbos. Turbo so turbo we're giving you twice as many turbos with that. Okay. So now, how we always end these the same way, huh. I open the floor to you at, for you to ask a question to the audience. What did I ask last time? Because I'm you trying not asked, to ask the same question. Okay, well, the question was good. Do you think I'm right? Because you made the whole case about why you tuned the CX-9 the way it was. Right. Do you think I'm right? And, of course, your audience agreed with you. Right. No yeah. one disagreed with you. Okay, that's good. So you need to, pro, you need to pose, I think, a, a, a solid question, but one, one not pontificating on whether you're right or wrong. Because <laughs> do you think the other going to agree with me? Well, we, you just admitted that it's not up to you. Right. Because if it they agree with you, that's me. great, but you still can't make it happen. We can't right. get, get 2.5 turbo just because you say it's going to yeah. happen. Well, I mean, so, yeah, there's, there's, there's two things that are not up to me that I want to do to this car. I'd like to put a manual transmission in the 2.5. Absolutely. Right? And there's several of us that want to do that. Yeah. It's really hard to prove the point that there's a market for that. Yeah. Because it doesn't, it's not out there. Um, but, uh, uh, you yeah, know, we'd like to do that. Uh, I'd like to put the 2.5 turbo in here, but it's right on top of the diesel. Like, which would you buy? If you had a 2.5 turbo gas engine or a 2.2 diesel. So they have the same amount of torque. That would be a really tough choice. It would. If, and it's a big if, if there was a, a turbo gas engine and a turbo diesel engine that both made the same torque, which would you, which would you choose? I have no idea. Right. I didn't realize they were that close. Okay, so it's a very simple question. Yeah. If you had a choice between, and you only could pick one. Right. Well, I know. You can buy both. We're okay with that. You're okay, but you're We're saying... We're okay, buy two. You need people if, to decide. If, if everybody who's going to buy a diesel says, I'll also buy a gasoline turbo engine, then we'd probably do it. How about we do this? <laughs> How about we get turbo up front and the gasoline in the back? Oh, I like the way you think. Yeah, that's what we need. <laughs> Dual fuel. You can get the carpool lane with that, right? And now they're going to go off. So none of these guys, can, they're not going to write a check for that. So this is a bigger problem. Because knowing this is not up to you and knowing how bean counters are, they probably are looking at 310 pounds foot of torque and saying, well, can we really have two in the same market? Right. So that's the question these guys got to answer. Right. Which one? I don't think we can give them the choice of they can have both. It's right. which one would they choose and why? Let us know in the comments below or via our social media, Motoman TV Award, Motoman TV Award, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And with that, I want to leave you with two things. Have you downloaded my app? I'm stalling. Okay. No service. You're doing it before I take you back to the hotel. And then number two, we need a fun fact. Tell us a fun fact about Dave. About about me? About Dave. We already know that you got a 540 and you got a Cayman. And right. you got a Miata track car. My, tell us a fun fact. My, uh, my 510 rally car that I just sold on eBay. Uh, the guy who bought it lost his job and isn't picking it up, so it's going back on eBay. So if you want a really horrible Datsun 510 rally car that's been rolled and crashed and beat to hell, but still starts and runs and drives, um, check it out eBay. Does it run? Oh, yeah. It's registered and insured. Oh, I want to go I'm drive it before you sell it. Oh, no, you really don't. No, I want to drive it before you sell it. Okay. okay. Until we see you next time, Bishop Bay time. What? It's German. Okay. Bishop Bay. Till later. Conversation never ends oh. with you and I. It's always okay. ongoing. We just keep Don't. rambling. Right yeah. after you say goodbye, we keep going. But we're now we're really gonna say goodbye. All right. Say goodbye. Bye.